grab a coffee, grab a snack, grab a meal, sit down, and let's have a chat. Hello, I'm Emily. Welcome to my channel. And today's video, we are going to be talking about how to start recovery from an eating disorder and my experiences in recovery with different treatment programs. So let's get started. So I wanted to start off this video by talking about my recovery journey and how I got diagnosed, different treatment programs I was in, different levels of treatments I was in, and then I'm going to talk about how to start recovery. So I was diagnosed with anorexia January 2019, and how I got diagnosed was th that day in particular I was super dizzy, I was really cold, I had a really low body temperature, and that was the first time I was scared of the side effects I was experiencing from restricting. I told my mom, I think I have an eating disorder, I think I have anorexia, and I told her my weight and how I didn't feel good and how I purposely am not eating and I'm restricting and not eating enough and I count calories and all this stuff. So after I told her that, uh, she was obviously concerned about the symptoms I was experiencing. So we went to the ER. Well, at first we went to the emergency clinic, like the walk-in emergency clinic. So we went in there, they took my weight and they did like my blood pressure and they collected my symptoms and then they recommended we go to the emergency room because I needed an IV. So we drove to the hospital, I got admitted into the ER and they took my weight, they took my temperature, my blood pressure, and then I think a psychiatrist came in and talked to me about my thoughts around food um, what I eat, how much I eat, if I count calories, and if so, how much calories I consume in a day, how much I work out, and with my physical symptoms, and what I was doing behavior-wise, they, the doctor came in and diagnosed me with anorexia restricting type. After they gave me my diagnosis, they also gave me a pamphlet of resources. And this included uh, eating disorder clinics, it had support groups on there, it had psychiatrists to call, and it had a few uh, therapists. Like, they had a pretty good list. And they had a lot of eating disorder clinics and like hospitals that specialize in eating disorders and like other mental health illnesses. So they basically gave me a diagnosis and then they also gave me resources and I was supposed to call those resources and then start recovery basically. After I got the list, me and my mom researched a few of the places and we found one that was really close to our house. So then we made an appointment, we called and I was scheduled to come in for an evaluation. And this was an in-person evaluation. Basically, when you go in for an evaluation, they ask you, well, they take your vitals, they take your blood pressure, weight, height, they calculate your BMI, all that jazz. And then they ask you about your behaviors, if you have um, like your calories, uh, behaviors you use, um, if you restrict fluids, they ask you everything. And from that evaluation that you give them and the answers you give them, they recommend what level of care they think you need, which will either be inpatient, residential, PHP, partial hospitalization, or intensive outpatient. In case you don't know, inpatient is kind of the highest level of care, residential is the second highest level, PHP is um, kind of like mid-level care, intensive outpatient is below that, and then outpatient. Then as you go up, you, the more supervised you are. So unfortunately, there's like a stigma 
in the ages our community like oh, you need to be inpatient you need to be like medically unstable in order to need help but that's not true and that's gonna go with what I'm about to say next so the place I went to they suggested PHP for me since I was 19 at the time I was above 18 so I could make my own decisions about my own care so then I said no and my parents are very upset that they can't force me to get help because I'm a legal adult. So since I refused that help I went all up until July getting sicker and I got accepted into the college that I wanted to transfer to because I was at another university I didn't like it um, and then I wanted to transfer and I got in like I gotta recover now. I can't go like this. My mom researched uh, therapists in my location that specialize in eating disorders and OCD because those are the two things I was diagnosed with. We found one and I went to go see her. They don't want to treat you because I think you need a higher level of care than what I can provide. I can only provide therapy one time a week and I you need more. So she knew I was really mentally sick and I needed more support around me than just going to therapy one time a week and that's all she could give me. So she kind of refused to see me because I needed a higher level of care than just therapy one time a week. I just did PHP again and my head was like, no, I'd rather do this completely outpatient. So then I went another long few months going with that recovery yet again until December or November 2019. November 2019, I had enough. I talked about this on Instagram Live before, a uh, link to my Instagram in the description, but I had enough with my eating disorder. I was so sad. I was depressed. I was so isolated. I was so sick of living trapped. So I finally decided to recover and I knew this was going to be the hardest thing I would have ever had to do in my life, but my eating disorder already took so much for me. I was like, I need to recover. So I went back and I saw the therapist that I saw back in July, which is my therapist now. And I love her very much. She's amazing. And we kind of made a contract. So about the contract, you're probably like, what contract with the therapist? What are you talking about? So my number one reason to recover was I wanted to eat Thanksgiving like a normal human being and I wanted to eat Christmas dinner like a normal human being eating all the foods that the rest of my family was eating and not have to worry about it and just enjoying the holiday spirit. I went and saw her and I was like, that's my number, that's my reason for recovery. I want to spend the holidays with my family and be present. I came up with a plan because when she saw me from July to November, I got worse. And at that point I needed to be inpatient because I was medically unstable and she wasn't comfortable treating me with the way I was. January 1st, when the holidays are over, I will be inpatient or residential and she will continue to see me through the holidays to help me on my recovery journey as long as I found a dietitian or a nutritionist that specialized in eating disorders and I was gaining weight during this period. I would go inpatient when the holidays were over. So I found a dietitian that specialized in eating disorders and eating disorder recovery. And I saw her, we got a meal plan. Everything was going great. I was doing therapy twice a week and I was on a wait list to go inpatient and, or if not inpatient, I was gonna go into a residential center January 1st. And I started my meal plan. I developed hyper metabolism, but thank goodness 
my body pulled through after a week and it started gaining weight. And hallelujah, because I felt so good. During my recovery being outpatient during um, November and January, I was getting labs once a week. So I got in, got my blood drawn and they made sure all my vitals were stable. So the holidays are now over and it's January 1st. The wait list for the place I was like on the wait list for was so long and people weren't coming out of treatment at the rate they thought they were going to be, like they were staying longer. Um, so I was pushed back on my wait list. February came around, no one left still. March came around, I was still on the wait list. I didn't need inpatient anymore, I gained um, enough weight to be in residential. So I gained enough weight to step down because I didn't need inpatient anymore. Um, and I was medically stable. At that time, I mentally already made so much progress and I was already gaining my weight and my weight was gaining at a, a good rate. I was being compliant with my meal plan. I was never restricting and everything was great. So they kind of decided she doesn't need residential anymore. So then they're like, try to get in PHP. Then I went to a PHP program. It was so far of a drive. It was like an hour and with traffic, hour 15 drive. Uh, it was all the way in the city of Chicago and I'm way in the suburbs. I dropped out and I do regret it. I think PHP would have been an amazing. And if you are in PHP, please don't drop out because you have support around you whenever you're there. They are always there for you when you have anxiety or when you're scared to eat something or when you're having a rough body image day. Like they know what to do, so please stick with it. But unfortunately for me, it just didn't work out. It was way too long of a drive. And my therapist, again, decided that mentally I am doing pretty okay and I'm still being compliant with my meal plan and I'm gaining weight. So I didn't need PHP anymore. Now it's been six months and I have been weight restored and I've been doing outpatient therapy and I'm still doing outpatient therapy. I'm still seeing my dietitian one time a week and my therapist two times a week. So now I wanna talk about how to start recovery from an eating disorder. First things first, you're gonna wanna tell someone you trust. If that's your mom, your dad, a sibling, grandparent, nurse, teacher you're close with, your best friend or your significant other, someone who you kind of live with and you trust and open up to them, be honest about your eating disorder, tell them your behaviors, tell them your thoughts and your feelings and your fears, and let them know that you wanna get better and you wanna recover and it's gonna be really hard, but you need to do this in order to stay alive and have a meaningful life. My second suggestion is to go to the emergency room if you don't feel good at least get a checkup with your doctor go see them um or just go to the er that's what i did i had no idea what to do so i just went to the er because i was not feeling good if you don't feel good physically or mentally um you need to go to the er my third tip that's four <laughs> three my third tip is to Research therapists in your area or around you that specialize in eating disorders or research eating disorder clinics in your area. Um, what you could do is find a therapist and then they'll give you an evaluation and they will give you what they think level, what they think, what kind of level of care they think you need. And if you're in a eating disorder treatment center clinic, you'll already have a nurse, therapist, psychiatrist, and dietitian slash nutritionist as a team. You already have a full team put together for you. 
But if you are doing this outpatient, kind of like what I did, then you'll need to find, you'll obviously need to go to your um, family doctor. So I guess my fourth tip would be making sure you have your own team if you're outpatient with a therapist, dietitian, and general doctor to do checkups and labs with. That is it for this video. I hope you guys found this helpful and you now are more educated and the process seems less scary on starting recovery and even how to start. Cause I know when I told my mom that day that I thought I had an eating disorder, we had no idea what we were doing. These are just my tips. These are from my experiences. Like this is from my recovery experience. Yours is going to be very different from mine. You, we all need different levels of care. It doesn't matter if you are inpatient or if you're outpatient. I did it completely outpatient. Um, some people need to be inpatient. Some people just need PHP. Everyone's level of care is different. Just like, you know, different bodies, different paths. We all have different paths in our recovery. We all have different paths in what kind of level of care we need. If you think you are struggling with an eating disorder, please get help. Please tell someone you trust. Please find a therapist, an eating disorder treatment center, because you deserve recovery. You deserve a meaningful life and living in an eating disorder is not meaningful life. It's just life surrounding numbers and calories and working out and you are made to do better things to be healthy. There's a beautiful life waiting for you in recovery and you can do it. Please go get recovery no matter what. You don't need to have lost weight. You don't need to have symptoms. You just need it to be mentally. You just need an unhealthy relationship with food in your head in order to deserve recovery. You deserve recovery no matter what. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.